Welcome to Ladies Talking Leaps, Episode 8. And we are actually doing our due diligence here. And, well, Syl is really the technological expert, let me just say, sort of thing. So she's managed to set this all up where we're actually doing this podcast remotely. So yes. She, for the first time, we're doing this. So I think it should sound pretty good from what we've done some testing and sounded pretty good. So, um, so yeah. So, um Given the circumstances in the world, not very happy. So we're hoping to cheer you guys up a bit with this. I got my Diet Coke with lime. Everybody knows that me and Syl uh, love our Diet Coke at the games. And um, I enjoy Tim's as well. But for today, I'm doing Diet Coke. <laughs> and um, yeah. Anyhow, um, we hope you're all safe and doing well as well with this isolation, quarantine. And um, obviously, there's not a lot to talk about hockey related too much and uh we're not no. we're gonna try not to bore you guys uh because i think actually just checking twitter this morning i think so, a lot of the usual tsn sports net and all the sports people are are uh they're kind of running out of material i think <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so let's see if we could come up with some new material yeah i don't know okay. hopefully yeah so um so yeah let's just refresh everyone's memory for a bit so Tell them where we're at, where we were at with the Leafs and the standings before this coronavirus all hit us in the world. Tell us. Okay, so, <laughs> so well, basically, there was we ha ended up having played seventy games with eighty-one points, so that was good for third place in the Atlantic Division. Uh, Florida was just behind us. We they still had a game in hand on us at this at this that point. Um, I did do a little looking at the time. I remember because it seems so long ago um, at the st at different statistics for whether or not you know we would be making the playoffs or what position we would end up in. Um, as things ended, I think uh, it was probably a, a much greater percentage than not that we would have finished third. There was a, a slight, like maybe twenty percent uh, chance that Florida could have uh, gotten. Um, ahead of us and we would end up in a wild card, but I think pretty much we we're probably going to end up um, in third place and playing Tampa. So that's how things sort of wrapped up for us. Um, and um, yeah, we won't get into it too much because obviously <laughs> there's mm -hmm. no games to be played for a little while now. So, but we wanted to refresh everybody's memory so that, because nobody's really talked about it from what I've heard as to like recently anyways, no one's really mentioned where we No, it's where, almost where like at. it came to a screeching halt and then, it, and I don't know, it's it's just, it's such a, a weird feeling because it's so, I don't know, once things start to, once they basically decide when things are going to come back, I wonder if all of a sudden, you know, we're going to take that out of whatever compartment that has been shoved in for now in our brains, and then it'll get pulled out and, and then we'll, we'll have feelings on it again. But it just kind of feels like everything's just sort of is in some sort of holding pattern in yeah. the ether. Yeah. And um, I guess the only this one of the sad things is that uh, Austin Matthews won't reach the 50 goal mark this season. Yeah. I mean, he, he will in future seasons, but mm -hmm. um, because personally, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't think there's going to be any regular season games. And even if there is, um, and he managed yeah, like, to get there, it's not really the same, like it's not going to have the same meaning or whatever as, uh, as it would have been if everything was True. gone a, a plan. So um so yeah, so we'll have to wait until next season for that again. And but one thing I we were just talking about this before we came on air here, and uh, about what Austin Matthews said. And I didn't hear this, but Elliot Friedman I apparently had. Um, I guess there was some player availability, and Matthews was a uh, was one of the players av made available. And Elliot Friedman had a couple of questions for him, and um, and asked him if the team ever thought he and the team ever thought if they would not make the playoffs and his quote he basically said in in sort of this manner anyways from the way i caught it it's we don't play with fear in this dressing room and we never will that to me brought chills to me i was like <laughs> wow i was like yeah 
now I want the hockey season back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Well, I find that uh, that quote very interesting. And I, I, I do think that that fits with them because, you know, it's been a roller coaster season. But I honestly think the roller coaster was more on our the fan side more than them because I think that was some of the frustration that, that some of us fans maybe felt is that they didn't seem to be, you know, there was always that thing about the urgency, whereas the ur- I, I think that they have this belief that one way or another, they're going to get it done and it's going to, yeah. that they'll be okay because of this kind of feeling that they they're not, they don't worry as much as we seem to worry. Like they have this very strong self-belief. Um, anyway, I, I guess good because, to hear that he, they feel that way. Yeah, I guess it's because too, I mean, we're long, long serving Leaf fans. So we've been yeah. through a lot over the years and uh, these players are all new though. I mean, they understand mm-hmm. the way Leafs Nation is and when we... I guess when we panic or our ups and downs and everything, they understand that, but they technically, they've never been through it really like with us. Mm-hmm. That It's just these well, last three seasons. I guess it, it makes me feel good to know that they're not internalizing it that way. You know, the way that, <laughs> the way that we all are. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that's yeah. kind of, kind of a good thing, I guess. So anyway, yeah, let's go on to where we think we'll be with this hockey season coming up. We'll basically give you the points of what the league has said in their most recent meeting from last Tuesday of the of the GM GM meetings. So um, yeah, well, first off, I I personally don't think that there will be any hockey this season. And I mean, like, if the question is, are you know, would we would would I be okay with hockey in July or August? Um, the answer to that question is, of course. I'll take mm-hmm. it wherever I can get it, I guess. Um, I'm actually but, on, not to say that I'm optimistic, but just yeah. from the interviews that I've heard this week of, uh, like from Bill Daly mm-hmm. and Brendan Shanahan and who was the other person? There was another person. Oh, Donald Fear. Mm-hmm. They all said that they, not to say that for sure they're going to have a hockey, but they were just talking more on the positive and and actually just saying that basically it's going to go into the summer like by the sounds of it um so that really when all three of those leading people in the nhl um like executives basically say that i don't know i for me i i believe it and um i don't know i happens, just i don't know i i actually think it's going to be an empty arenas though that's yeah, how i think me, it's like but that but that still to me doesn't make any sense because first of all like right now there's mm-hmm. you can't travel anywhere and so how exactly are they going to get you know players from you know the states to Canada and vice versa like well, it's going to be that, in the summertime though right i know but day. think about if, if, how long that's going to take to open up the the borders that way to travel because travel is the huge, the biggest contributor to, to the spread and the way things are in the States right now. I, I don't know. Like I, it's not just up to the leagues like this. There's the governments also have to be, have to open up these borders for for this. Yeah. And also players are all over scattered all over the world now because people went back to wherever they're from. And, um, so it's going to be a question of how long it's going to take for that to happen. Because think about this. I kind of right now when I'm like looking, analyzing this kind of stuff, I, I look to how long it's taken from when things started in China to now when they're opening things up. And it's been four months. And so now they're, they're you know, letting, um, alleviating some of the lockdowns, but they're still not opening borders. So that's going to be you know, another month, say not till maybe the end of April till they start to, you know, have travel again. So yeah. I, I, to me, like it, it would make more sense to me for it to be August, September. So in that regard, like I kind of wonder, you know, are they going to have go right into playoffs and, you know, the, we basically, the end of the season's done right now and have some sort of short training camp and then go into like a playoff tournament and then start the season, the next season late and have a shortened season. Like that's the only thing way I see it could really work. 
But to me, September is the start. There's, yeah, well, yeah. And then, but then there's the other thing that they said that they don't want to, I think it was Bill Daly that said it, that they, NHL is like 100%, well, basically, I think it was 100% against not having a complete season next year. So for me, when he said that, hmm. that means to me then we're done now because you, you cannot oh, yeah. have the full season next season. There's no way. And that's... That's, but then do you think that mean? are you saying regular season done or like done is in not even any playoffs? Yeah. Like this season yeah, like is complete no. and no it's, playoffs. Yeah. yeah like we're done. There's no only cup this year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I, I picture To me, if, if they're talking like that actually would me make the most sense to me, which is like, that's just so, so depressing to think so about I'm, that. Yeah. So I'm but, either one um, or two ways, basically it's um, if they can't do that complete season next season, yeah. like for next season, then they're done. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah, that has to be if, because there's, there's no way that they could finish this season and then still have an, a full season next year. I just don't see that being able yeah. to happen. Yeah. Anyways, so, let's get into what uh, they've, what they've uh, said basically so for the most some of recent the things update. That, yeah. So some of the things that have happened already that they have postponed for sure are the, the draft, the combine and the awards show. Um, so it's interesting to think about how the, the lottery will work. Um, and the other thing I actually thought of too, is that, you know, I was listening to the radio and um, somebody was talking about how, you know, with the trade deadline, you know, they went ahead with that. People made trades, traded picks, all of that. And they're basically... And that was for a playoff push and they're getting nothing for that yeah. now. Yeah. So you got to figure. It, How will Dubis be... did well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, Maybe um, he knew something. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, but that's kind of interesting that you got to figure, um, will there be some sort of compensation for teams that, you know, kind of went all in that way or whatever. And yeah. Um, the other part of it too is that you know normally you know teams are scouting players you know they're going to the memorial cup and all of that stuff they use the combine to kind of you know you know check in on players fitness and stuff all of that is out so they're going to have to really be relying on like video scouting to figure out yeah you know what's no, going to go huge. on, and, it, and it's too bad for the younger players too. Because I mean, that's yeah. their entry into the NHL. I always look forward to watching the draft. Doesn't matter mm -hmm. who's picking first. You always see the families all there, and they're all excited when their kid gets mm -hmm. chosen, whatever round, right? And they're not going to have that opportunity this year. I wonder if they could do it, um, you know, distance. Because I know that, for example, I think the I think the NFL does it this way because there's just so many players that players actually they they watch the um, it unfold but they're not actually there and they have it like kind of video conferenced in yeah and they're with their families and then they get told and da 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 da, da. so I kind of wonder if they may have to go to something like that instead yeah yeah so anyways those are postponed and yeah and and still it's a work in progress and then and what we're and then back to sort of what we were talking about before about, you know, when hockey might start. So like the NHL has asked the, the all the teams for uh, arena home dates available in August. Um, and they've also officially extended the quarantine till April 7th. And I mean, that could go longer, obviously. And we're still finding out, you know, uh, in recent days, you know, a couple more players have tested positive. So while that keeps happening, you know, these things are kind of going to be adjusted. But. Yeah. So the quarantine is basically just because the the teams are waiting or the NHL is waiting so that because none of these players can actually work out. So they and they can't no. work out even in like little mini groups or anything. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're saying with the quarantine I, basically I, there. I did hear actually what they're talking, do they, what they're doing, what the Jays are doing this week is that they have small groups of less than eight that are able to go and be at the facility at one time. But the thing is they're in the States, right? So the rules potentially they're, they're different yeah. there as well. Uh, but for, for, you know, our players, the NHL players, 
I mean, the the rinks are closed and we don't have like a one team facility, you know, um, unless it's the the actual uh, home rinks. So or their practice facility. But this is the thing is that until now that everybody's dispersed, players can't come back. So unless they're going to find a local place to be able to practice or train, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's all up in the air. <laughs> it's, yeah. Anyhow, they asked the, for the arena. Yeah, they've asked for the uh, arena home dates for August and wait for more, basically. And then another update, um, I guess it's similar to what I was saying before uh, with Bill Daly, Donald Fear, Brendan Shanahan. They all basically gave the indication that we will have a Stanley Cup awarded this season um, for 2020. Yeah, but then they're talking out of both sides of their mouth because how could he say if Bill Daly said that they they don't want to have a shortened season next year, but then he's also saying, you know, they're going to award a Stanley Cup this year. What the heck? Like, how well, does that what work? I, that's that's I didn't <laughs> I make don't get sense that. of that either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other thing is actually... The reason why another reason why I think they will have a season is because the projective loss is north of one billion dollars is what I heard from um, from TSN. I, I saw that um, if this season is canceled um, uh, as well as the playoffs, like if it's a total. So and I, I can't picture ahead. Gary Bettman uh, <laughs> wanting to lose that much money. There's no way I can see him letting it go and let obvious well i mean what it's it's a health issue around the world so like mm -hmm. he's gonna have to if he has to he has to right like it's nothing it's a lot of industries are gonna be losing a lot yeah um, it's not just sports obviously no and it you kind of got to wonder too one of the things that i thought of is you know what's that gonna mean for the the cap now because they were projecting that it was gonna go up you know, what will that do to the Leafs cap situation? Yeah, because we'll leave that for another show. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at that too, and I'm like, you know what? It's just like, wow, well, okay. That, yeah. That's the thing. I mean, our team's not the only team that's going to be, you know, somewhat screwed by that because there's a lot of cap teams in the league. But yeah, and there's you the, gotta, uh, and we got to think of the Seattle expansion too. Yeah, exactly. It's coming up, right? With the new team. So. Anyhow, let's get on to some lighter stuff. So that's it for the, mm -hmm. I guess, the hockey side update and the leaf update of what there was with Austin <laughs> Matthews' quote. That's about it. Um, so now we're going to get into something a bit lighter and talk about how players around the league are um, interacting on social media. Tell the truth, most people that are probably listening to this know that I'm not a huge social media thing, but somehow I've got... I've got into Twitter and a little bit of Instagram, but anyhow, I'm, uh, hopefully you guys are following us too on Twitter and Instagram. The handle is LTL1917 and we had a cool, uh, I thought it was cool anyways. I posted the ticket from the forum, from the game that we went to at the forum Montreal. Mm -hmm. Good times, you know, good times. Yeah, good times. But going back to the social media thing um, with the players um, and their interaction while they're on this quarantine um, a lot of our Leaf players, we were talking about this with Sill before, too, like, they don't seem to be on there much, except for Hyman doing, uh, yeah, that, Hyman and Marner doing, streams. yeah, which I have no idea what that is, but it's something to do with video, <laughs> video games, <laughs> video games, yeah, and, um, that's because Hyman's a big time entrepreneur, and yes, it's yeah. his, uh, his gaming leagues and stuff, so. Yeah, so he's been on there, and I guess Riley had uh, his washing the hands bit there, and um, but nothing too exciting, anyways, right? Like no. from them. So we've decided we're going to pick our own, I guess, social media posts, which one that we liked or thought were kind of cool. I picked somebody from San Jose, actually, <laughs> which was kind of weird. The guy is from San Mark Edward Vlasic. He's played on Team Canada. I don't know if you guys... He's a good defenseman. He's a solid defenseman. Wish we had him on our team, that's for sure. Um, he's getting a little bit older now, but... Yes, yeah. But he's a stay-at-home guy, and uh, and he's behind the scenes, I guess, in San Jose there. Um, they got Brent Burns, obviously, and Carlson, so mm -hmm. Eric Carlson. But yeah, no, he was on this sled. I don't know where the hell he was. It was some winter wonderland, that's for sure. This is like 
This is like right after the, uh, I guess, a couple of weeks ago anyways, like maybe right after the quarantine. And he's he's on this sled in a winter wonderland and these dogs are like chasing him from behind. It just looked like a real serene place sort of thing, right? And it looked like he was having fun on the sled. No people so. around, so he was safely yes. distanced. Yes, yeah. That's, <laughs> he was already practicing the physical distancing. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I also liked, although I have no idea what this TikTok thing is. I don't know. Do you know what this is, TikTok thing? Yes. Is? Yeah. It's uh, it's just basically it. Um, it's just little um clips and stuff to to music that you. Pre- it, it used to be called Musically, and it was bought by uh, uh, I guess it was a Chinese company, and they renamed it TikTok, and so you can make these like quick little videos and stuff. It has to do with usually there's music with it. Mm-hmm. Well, anyways, I actually liked a few days ago, Kevin Bieksa, Bieksa came out with his uh, daughter on this TikTok thing. And I don't know, he was pretty grooving there <laughs> on this TikTok video. And I thought it was uh, I thought it was pretty funny, actually, even though I find him annoying as a commentator. Um, <laughs> I like him. I don't, I don't know. know why you don't like him. I think he's good. I think it's because but... my nephew actually told him, told me once that he looks like a his face looks like a mouse or something. And now ever since... What? I, yeah. <laughs> yes. He's, he's like, look at his face. He told me this long, quite a while ago. Anyways, and then ever since then, I'm like, yeah, you know, you're right. And he looks like a mouse. Like he's like a little... I don't know. Anyways, but I liked his I liked his Instagram TikTok thing or whatever. Yeah. So those were my two choices because the Leafs to me were all boring. Although mm-hmm. I did like J- yeah. JT with the baby. The baby's so cute. That I was like cute. That. I like and and I like his the letter that he wrote. It's nice. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, I, I like Marner's little post of learning the downward dog from his. Puppy. He can do better. <laughs> yeah, that's true. He he can do better. Yeah, he can um, do better. It was it was cute though. Although I found his form was not that great for his <laughs> downward dog. But yeah. anyway, um, the, Who'd you the <laughs> okay. So I actually. St- you, I was as we were preparing for this. I was scouring to find this one that I really liked, and it was it's Chris Mason from Nashville, and he was making fun of the fact that a lot of the NHL players are posting their at home workouts, and he's you know basically saying you know, you know why would anybody want to do that kind of thing? And you know he had this big long kind of serious quote. Uh, about character and stuff. And then in the meantime, he goes outside to do his workout. And um, it's like a montage of him doing all these different things on his driveway. Like there's like a, a baseball cage and a basketball net and a hockey net and a little tricycle. And he's doing all of these things. But it's all fast forwarded and it's all set to like um survivor music from the 80s like not the eye of the tiger but another another one i think it's the song that they used in the rocky four um so it's like this workout montage and of course there's this thing that says i had no idea this was being filmed and anyways it was really 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 funny and really that cute. one up i never i really that. liked it it was oh, so good all right yeah did you so anybody else or no um not really. I mean, I did did tune into because I guess I can't remember the lead singer's name from the Arkells, but he's been doing all these different uh, videos with different people, and so he had like a he's been doing these live streams. A lot of different artists are doing live streams, so he's been doing them with different people. And he had um, Tessa Virtue and Morgan Riley on together uh, one day, so I tuned into that, and that was pretty good. It's, it's kind of nice to see them, like, as a couple, like, they just, they look very comfortable and happy yes. together, so yeah, that's nice. Yeah. That's one thing I'm super sad about in a way that, you know, he, Morgan, had just come back from injury, and, um, I really felt like when he played that, that first game, that we, that was something we were so missing, and yeah, he has a presence he's on been the bench, so, he, right? Well, yeah. at presence, period. I mean, he's the yeah. one, like, I would say, other than maybe Zach Hyman doing his, like, entrepreneurial stuff um, or his community things, uh, that Riley's the most visible, for sure. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so I kind of, you know, I think that we were going to really put Another, something together there. Actually, I just thought of something, speaking of being visible, even though he's mm-hmm. only been here, I don't know how many games, but... Um, I was happy to hear that about Kyle Clifford being oh, yeah. wanting to actually mm-hmm. um, stay here, like because obviously I guess 
like his contract is up this season mm-hmm. sort of thing. So he'd have to resign. And, and apparently both parties, even Shanahan said in his, uh, in his interviews or whatever, that the feeling is mutual, that the Leafs want to hopefully have him back whenever, like mm-hmm. for next season onwards, because yeah, he's, a, he's a presence too. Definitely. For sure. And actually then in speaking of Shanahan, I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad that he's sort of, you know, still, I guess part of his job is keeping the Leafs at the forefront of things in a way. So he's, yeah. he's also been, you know, out there and speaking and that was, there's some good information and good things that he talked about when he got interviewed this week. So, yeah, that's just, I don't know. It's just so, I don't know. There's yeah. the, what the word I'm looking for is, it's just, it's just, just it's no, up in the air. Everything is up in the air and yeah, it's limbo, limbo all around limbo. and not in yeah. the fun dance way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So let's go on now. We've kind of created this new segment now. I came up with this title. <laughs> mm-hmm. Back in the day. <laughs> because yeah. that's all we're seeing on TV now. We're seeing uh, all these old uh, games like from back in the 80s. or They haven't mm-hmm. gone back to the 67 final yet. I'm waiting for that one again. But um, Leafs TV hasn't put that on yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're basically going to choose a game that... I guess we have a connection to, or we remember. Um, and um, yeah, we're just going to talk about, uh, is it, talk about the connection we have with the team through that game and that sort of thing. So, I mean, I've, I, I basically chose a game from the eighties because I don't know, we should have a broad range of listeners out there, but um, the eighties is a, is a time an era era where obviously not a lot of good things happened. Um, But there were some good players and good teams and players that had personality in that. So, um, so my game and we're going in April, this is just for the month of April. So thankfully it's playoff games. So there, they were more exciting. Those, those games, it was April 16th, 1987. And John Brophy was the head coach of the Leafs back then. He was quite the character, but we won't get into (laughs) to that um and it was uh basically we were in a seven game playoff series with the st louis blues and we won yay (laughs) that's Um, actually i looking back like i i i don't even didn't even remember how many times we played st louis like in various different playoff series like obviously we did because norris division but I don't, I didn't really, I hadn't really recalled that we played them so much in like pivotal series. Yeah. Yeah. And the, um, yeah, the, that's the thing though, back then with the divisional, with the way the NHL was set up when it came to playing in the playoffs and the regular season with the division, um, it was all divisional, basically the, the playoffs game. So Mm -hmm. like first place would play fourth place second would play third, right? There's five teams. The fifth team didn't make it. That was Minnesota that year. I looked it up. Um, Mm -hmm. But it was just, there was just a different, there were more rivalries back then, let's just say. And yeah, I um, think that they're trying to recreate that somehow, but I don't don't really feel it with the way their bracket system is, especially when you've got like, the, the best teams pitted against each other so early. Like I know they, they want it to be exciting, but I'm not really seeing that it creates the, the same rivalry in the same way. Yeah. And so 1987, I actually read too, was the first time, cause the first round series used to be a best of five. And that was right. the first year that it yeah. actually went to best of seven. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and so that was interesting. We won the series, uh, Brad Smith, that's basically what caught my eye when I saw this game and I was, and I was watching like interviews of old players and stuff like that was that motor city Smitty. That was his, that yeah. was his nickname. Right. And he scored the winning goal. And I remember, I always liked him. Yeah. And I remember as a younger kid, then like you had a, I don't know, just hearing that motor city Smitty and he was always like cruising around the ice and he, he just had flair in his game and he was so excited. Cause like, to score that winning goal, he he like when he celebrated, he like celebrated like end to end from the from <laughs> one end to the other from the. Yeah, you don't goal. see that anymore. <laughs> no, no, you'll get killed basically if, yeah. <laughs> if you do that. But um, but yeah, and it was uh, it was a different time back then. And Wendell was the um, 
I guess, in his second season. And uh, mm-hmm. that was the famous hound line. We actually had a... Right, um, with Gary Lehman and Russ Yeah, Cardinal. Yeah, so... Yeah, we had it was the, so good. We had the hound line going then. So they were the young guys just in their second season. And um, so they all played for the uh, Notre Dame Hounds in Saskatchewan. That's why it's mm-hmm. called the hound line. Um, yeah, so that was cool. And yeah, and... Um, and the fact that we won, obviously, and that was the first time that we won the playoff series since 1978 when Lanny McDonald won the uh, series for us against the Islanders. So, mm-hmm. unfortunately, <laughs> we are in, currently it kind of matches because we're like 14 seasons now that we haven't won a playoff series. Um, right. Yeah, this would have been time. the one that we would have won one. Yeah, yeah, most likely. But, um, but yeah, so I still will believe that and no <laughs> one can dispute me. There will be no proof to dispute my my yeah. statement. So what was your um, game that you chose? So, so I was I was looking. I mean, like obviously, like because where we were trying to pick an, a game that happened in April for this particular uh, podcast. So, um, some of my favorites were a little bit farther down down the playoff road, but um, I ended up picking a game that's not that not that far in our our past. Um, I actually looked uh, to the 2017 playoff run, which is the first time we've been in the playoffs um, for a long time. Um, well, not super, super long, but it's the first time we had made the playoffs with with Babcock and with uh, our young guys. And as I was looking back to this game, so the game happened on the game I chose was game two versus the Washington Capitals, which happened on April 15th, 2017. Um, And I was, I don't know, I was really blown away by the affection that I have for that team. There is just, I don't know, like I, I was watching that and I was like, so missing, you know, Bozak and JVR and Naz and Jake Gardner even. Um, And the same time, yeah, they were the connection to the like they for were the good, previous. Yeah, yeah, and they were good leaders. Like uh, they, yeah. they really had to go through bad times there, <laughs> and they yeah. came through it and were helping these young guys, these newer guys out. And and the then seeing you know like you know um, um, Austin and Willie and um, you know Marner and. And Kapanen, Ka- the part of the reason I picked this game actually is because this was Kapanen's breakout, basically. Like he got to play in the, he scored his first goal in the last game of the season, which got us to the playoffs in the first place. And then in this game, he scored two huge goals, including the overtime winner. And just looking at him, the intensity and the fire, I, I, I kind of just realized that towards the end of this season, I started seeing that same kind of look in him and that's kind of the way he needs to play and to be really effective. And I don't know, it was just pretty, pretty uh, fun to see and exciting to see uh, this team and how it came together. And um, yeah, and it's really it. Kudos to Mike Babcock as well. Yeah. Uh, again, sort of thing, right? Because he... They weren't supposed to be there. They weren't supposed to be there. It was supposed to be, like he said in his press conference, there's pain coming. And there was supposed to be pain a little bit longer than that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> than, than going into the, like, they're basically his second season as as coach and yeah. actually making the playoffs. So And that um, game was a double overtime game as well. Yeah. So, yeah, so. it's pretty, pretty, pretty good. And I, I don't know, like, I, I don't... But there's some something I do find that's not quite there yet with this team, the way it's kind of put together right now. Like I, there's something a little bit missing still, but anyways, I think it, it's going to come together, but yeah, I think uh, Shan- that was Shan- fun. Shanahan, I think actually said in one of the interviews, it's kind of still a work in progress. Yeah. Um, I so- do believe that. Cause I, I, f- I feel that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Well, that was good. <laughs> yeah. We could actually pick more games or thing and go ramble on. But I mean, we're going to have, we're going to leave it at that, I guess, for now. Um, because who knows how much more material we'll have to talk about in the, uh, in the coming yep. months. Exactly. We've got to save some of our good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, this worked out pretty well with our remote podcasting. So yeah, so uh, I'm we'll hoping that you. everyone out there is keeping safe and keeping well, and also keeping their distance. Right. Um, this is my part. I'm going to do a little bit of a public service announcement. Everybody, stay inside. Uh, I kind of feel like you know we're everybody's seeing so many numbers every day and. Um, I kind of think that we should just try to mute that if you can in your brain and just assume everybody should just assume that they have it and could give it to somebody. So if you have that mindset and you keep that in mind that you could infect somebody and someone could end up having, you know, an adverse outcome from that, um, then we'll all stay safe and get through this because we're in it together. So as everyone is saying, right? Exactly. So stay safe, stay healthy. Yeah. And go, leads, go.